Okay, Algebra 1, uh, Algebra 1A, this is test 2 review. Uh, this is the second time I'm shooting this because the uh, computer kind of messed up and ended up shooting like one small pixel. So if you wanted to watch a long video on this arrow right here, the one that I'm touching on the screen right now, then you could have watched it. It was like 15 minutes long of just that arrow, so very exciting work. Anyway. Uh, my goal for today is to do about nine problems that are going to be on the review. I tried to pick a few that were um, sort of near the back of the review in case you didn't get to it in class. We did do this part of it in class today, so let's get to it. Uh, I'm going to look at number four first. If you do have your review uh, handy, that would probably be for the best if you get, went ahead and got that thing out. But, you know, choose your own adventure. It's your life, I guess. Um, now, Number four says evaluate a b squared for a equals 10 and b equals 5. My suggestion to you is that you go ahead and make the parentheses that's already there. That is a gigantic line, so I'm going to mark that out. Take two on that one, huh? There we go. So a, much better. I'm going to put the parentheses and the squared. Now I know that when a touches b like they're doing right here, that means multiply. So I'm going to go ahead and put 10 times... 5. By the way, if 5 was negative or 10 was negative, I would put an extra set of parentheses in there if I needed to. But in this case, I don't really um, need to do that. I don't know why I hit that button. There. Now I'm back to where I started. It's important for me to go ahead and do the inside part. You can just type this in your calculator. 10 times 5 is going to give you 50, and 50 squared, of course, is 2,500. So the answer to number 4 would just be C. Really simple, shouldn't give you a big headache about getting that problem right. But the key is to make sure that if you do have a negative you're plugging in, make the extra parentheses and plug it into the calculator that way. That way you make sure that you get the correct answer instead of making a careless mistake on one that really, in all honesty, is not that difficult. Uh, next we're going to look at number six. As you can see, this is a distributive property question. And you can tell that because that negative one in parentheses right there is being is touching the uh, parentheses of that negative 4 minus C, which means multiply, because hamsters touch, they multiply. Same in numbers. So we're going to take that negative 1 and do negative 1 times negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. Then I'm going to do negative 1 times negative 1C. If you forget that it's 1, you might want to write it in. Negative 1 times 1 is positive 1, so plus 1c, and you don't usually write the 1 mathematically. So the answer to number 6 is just a. That's a really simple question to get right. It's also really easy to get wrong if you're careless. Like it's, you could simply, uh, you could end up picking d here, which you can't see very well because this thing's in the way, but on your paper it'll say like 4 minus c. Well it's easy to remember that you do uh, negative 1 times negative 4 gives you positive 4, but if you're careless, you won't remember to go back and pop that extra uh, negative 1 times negative C thing and get that plus. So make sure you take care of business there and get the correct answer. The next one we're going to look at is number 8. This is a distributive property question, of course. It's not a difficult one at all. It just looks weird. Um, if you can remember that negative 1 half, or positive 1 half, I'm sorry, times negative 36. That's the first part because it's multiply, and you'll end up with negative 18m. Then you'll do 1 half times 6, which if you type it in will give you plus 3. And I look for the answer, and I see that it is C. Now, I should mention that since I did this video twice, I got to fix a mistake this time uh, that I made, made the first time. The first time I did all that work and then picked D anyway because 6 is in the answer choice or is in the question. So I picked D because it says negative 18 just like it's supposed to and then it says 6. D would not be the right answer obviously because negative uh, uh, positive 6 times 1 half is not uh, 6, it's 3. So make sure you don't make the same mistake I did and get the correct answer. I also didn't want to hide the fact from you that I make mistakes all the time doing these. and If I can do it, so can you. Number uh, 16, and by this is one of those times where you don't want to follow my lead. You want to get that answer correct. Number 16 is one of those weirdo ones where they ask you to order it. Uh, there's a couple key points when you're doing this type. The first is to make sure uh, it's our uh, to pay attention to what it says. It says least to greatest, which means I need to have the smallest number first. Or another way to say it is I need to have the one that is the uh, the most negative first. Because 
negative numbers are kind of like owing money. So if you have something that's more negative, that's a bad situation. That's the least situation you want to be in. So I need to make sure that my most negative number is the furthest to the left if it's least to greatest. In order to do that, I'm going to make a comparison statement. Uh, in, in doing so, I need to convert everything to decimals that's not already a decimal, and then line them up uh, on top of each other in columns and make a statement there. Now, there's only two that are negative numbers, so I'll make that comparison first. The 0 0.8 is um, in already in decimal form, so I have no idea why I wrote that below it since it's already there. But negative 5 over 6 is not, so I need to convert it into a decimal, which is negative 0 0.83. Now I can make a comparison statement between that and negative 0 0.8. And by the way, if there's nothing after the 8, you just keep adding zeros as long as you need to add them. Then I compare them left to right. The zeros are the same, so that I can't make a comparison there. The 8's are the same, so that's out. Now I'm comparing what is more negative. This negative 3 or the negative 0, which 0 can't be negative, obviously. So negative 3 is the most negative. So that would make this my first term in sequence, because it was the 0.831. The next one would be the other negative one, which is here. So I'm going to go ahead and make that comparison. Oops. Now I can compare my positive numbers. In order to do that, I need to convert them into decimals. Square root of 2 is 2, or square root of 4 is 2, 2 2.0 actually. Um, square root of 3 is 1.73, I think, and uh, 0 0.2 uh, is already in decimal form. So I'm going to make a column out of the numbers with the decimals all lined up. And I can make every statement I need to make based on this first column. I'm doing least to greatest, so I'll find the smallest positive number first. So there would be this one. So 0 0.2 would be my third term in sequence. And then it would be this 1.73 would come next, so that would be my fourth term in sequence. And then my fifth term in sequence. So my biggest number would be square root of 4. I can rewrite them in form now if I want. You may not need to do this step, but you might. And all I'm doing is looking at the numbers and putting them in order like I'm supposed to. So the answer to number 18, or number 16, I'm sorry, is D. The big issue here is getting them into decimal form, making comparisons that make sense, as opposed to just randomly making comparisons, and then moving on from there. Uh, now I'm going to switch programs really fast so I can talk about Uh, some of the ones on the... Uh, I had to use two programs to make this. I think the first one I'm going to do is number 22. Yep. So on number 22, this is one of those really simple um, uh, questions that... It's just a distributive property question. Essentially, it's a two-step equation. I'm going to rewrite it a little bit bigger so you can see it. Now, follow the rules like we always do. The first step... Um, is to draw the line. So I'm going to draw the line down the center there, or down the equal sign. Then I need to do baby goes bathroom. So I do negative 2 times negative 10 gives you positive 20. And then negative 2 times 1x, in case you forgot, is minus 2x. Uh, now I'm at the party's over stage. So I'm going to start looking for the old variable term. There it is. So I need to move the number that's furthest away from that x, but on the same side of the line, which in um, in this case, of course, is the 20. Now, the minus 2 doesn't mean anything to the 20. It is a plus 20. But the relationship between the 20 and the 2x is an add-subtract one. This does say 20 minus 2x. So I need to get rid of the plus 20 by subtracting 20. And I get negative 18. I bring down my negative 2x. I don't do something silly like bringing down um, positive 2x or some other weirdness. Make sure you bring everything down. Now I'm going to divide by negative 2 on both sides. Negative 18 divided by negative 2 is 9. So the answer, or the correct answer to number 22 is F, which is the equivalent of A, by the way. Now let's see if I can get to another one. I want to do number 25. This is one of those ones that has the divide in it. But in this case, the divide is only under the R. So I treat that uh, kind of like if it said four times R in a way. So I'm going to write this one down. 
First step is draw my line. Then I'm, there is no uh, distributed property here, so I can go ahead and get this r by itself. Since only the r is divided by 4, I still need to get rid of the number that's furthest away from it, which is plus 5. So I subtract 5 on both sides. 6 minus 5 is 1. Then I bring down this entire r divided by 4 term. Now in order to get r by itself, I need to get rid of divide by 4, and I'm going to use times 4. 1 times 4 is 4, so my final answer is r equals 4, which is d. I should mention, the reason that you do the divide by 4 thing right here is because r over 4 can also be written as 1 over 4 r, so 1 fourth of an r. It's like I'm breaking r into four parts in the r over 4 scenario, or I can say 1 fourth of an r in, this, in the second scenario, which is the same thing. Now if you multiply 1 fourth times 4, 4 as a fraction is 4 over 1, so all this stuff cancels out and you end up with just the r left, which is exactly what I wanted to happen. So I needed to do times 4 on that one to get it right. Um, the next one I'm going to do is number 30, in case you're following along with your paper. If you're not, you know, it doesn't really matter what number I'm doing. I could just be telling myself. Uh, now, number 30 is a little bit of a different, uh, it looks very similar to the last one, but it's not exactly the same. Now in this one, as you can see, this entire term on the top is divided by 6. It's almost like this should be in parentheses in a way. So I need to get rid of the divide by 6 just in order to move on. Because I'm trying to get x by itself, but in order to do so, I need to get that entire term off the top of that fraction. In order to get rid of divide by 6, I need to do times. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. Bring all this down. And I've got my x. It's right uh, here, of course, I must have not pressed it, right there. In order to get rid of minus 4, I'm going to add 4. Negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. So my final answer should be F to number 30. And I'm actually going to check that one. It was one of the ones that, um, yeah, it is. I had done the other problems in the original video, but I didn't do this one. I just thought this was better than the one I had chosen before. I'm going to do number 32 now, in case you have your stuff with you. This is one of those ones that looks really long. It's not difficult. It's just distributive property and then combining like terms. Now, um, I have to do the distributive property parts first. So I do 10 times negative 5, which is negative 50 x, and then I do 10 times negative 10, which is negative 100. Um, the next one I do negative 2 times 1x, so I get negative 2x, and then I do negative 2 times negative 10, which is positive 20, because a negative times a negative is a positive. From here, all I'm doing is combining like terms. Here's a term with an x, and here's another one. Those are like terms. So I do negative 50 minus 2. Negative 50 minus 2 is negative 52x. As you can see, there's absolutely no um, equal sign here, so I don't do anything opposite operations here. There's no need to. There's no drawing lines with no equal sign. So I just combine them like it says. And then, uh, because if I looked at the x as being like the shirts team, then the skins team would be the numbers without x's. So I do negative 100 plus 20, and I get negative 80. So my answer to a, uh, to number 32 should be H. I'm going to do one more, I think. Hopefully I'm going to do number, I think, 54 probably. I'm going to skip to it and see if it's a good one. Yeah, this is a decent one. I did 55 originally, but then I realized the answers make it so easy, it's a waste of your time. This one's not as much of a waste of your time. Now this one looks more complicated, uh, may seem more complicated than it actually is. You know how to do this already. I will go ahead and note that this minus 4r is not inside of parentheses and is not touching anything directly. So what we're going to do is bring it down, the whole thing. That makes your life much easier because then you worry about the distributive. Negative 5 times negative 2 gives you positive 10. Negative 5 times 9 gives you negative 45. 
Now I've got another one of those situations where I have some like terms. Here's one. Here's one. So am I going to do anything with this 10? No. There's only one of them. No like terms to 10. But negative 45 minus 4 gives me negative 49 R. Now remember, don't do opposite operations in situations where you have no uh, line drawn, no equal sign. There's no need to. You just combine them like they say that they should. I'm going to check, make sure that's the right answer, and it is. So that's it. I think that uh, based on what I've seen in class, uh, people should do really well uh, on this test, and I am hopeful that that will certainly be the case. So good luck on the test um, on Friday, and I hope that this review was helpful.